Downtown Milford is a great way to spend your afternoon or your evening. There are plenty of things to do down there and I'm gonna tell you all about them. Hi, I'm Stacy Olson with the Valentini team at William Ramis Real Estate. And on my channel, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about living on Connecticut's coast. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about downtown Milford, but I'm actually only gonna talk about a small piece of it because there's way too much to cover to have it all in one video. So stay tuned because I will have several more in this series. For this part of the series, I'm going to focus on the circle that basically is Daniel Street and River Street. There's plenty to talk about just in that small section, so let's get to it. First, I'm going to talk about this section of Milford because everybody grumbles about the congestion and the confusion with the roads and everything that that causes. So when you're driving toward downtown Milford, River Street goes underneath the railroad tracks and when it comes out the other side, it's only one way. So that really confuses people. So when you wanna to get to Daniel Street, you have to stay to the far left as you go under that overpass, and then just keep making a left, and eventually it'll just direct you onto Daniel Street, which again is also a one-way road. Needless to say, it causes a ton of confusion down there. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen a wrong way driver in that area. They come up from the Milford Harbor onto River Street and they think they could just go directly ahead of them, but it's a one way road. But honestly, they could do a better job with the signage there to alert people that it's one way and they're going the wrong way. But part of me actually likes the fact that this is road that's one way, it, it's kind of, makes it feel more quaint and you know if they got rid of that daniel street and just made it two ways there i feel like it would lose part of its appeal so if you are driving into downtown milford you have to be aware that there can be parking issues there is some street parking on river street and there's some street parking near the green on broad street and there's a couple of lots that are back further down toward the milford harbor but in this general area that I'm talking about today, the only real parking is street parking. And one of the restaurants I'm going to mention does have their own parking lot, but I'll talk about that later. Another option for folks is to take the train. The train station is literally right across the street from this entire section that I'm speaking about. So if you live in another town, you could just hop on the Metro North and get off in Milford and literally walk one to two minutes to any of these restaurants that I'm gonna talk about. And the best part is, you just hop back on the train to go home. What's better than that? And I do know on the weekends, uh, the parking is free at the train station. So if you're coming up to Milford to go to a restaurant on a Saturday or a Sunday, you're in luck, because you can park at the train station for free. I'm gonna start focusing on all of the restaurants that are in this small section of downtown Milford. There are actually seven restaurants, or maybe eateries, I would call them, and soon to be eight. I know, that's just crazy to me. It's a small area and there's a ton of restaurants. First, I'm gonna start on Daniel Street with probably the most well-known restaurant out of the entire group I'm gonna talk about, and that's Stone Bridge Restaurant. It really is iconic in downtown Milford. They're situated right on the Weepawag River, which is beautiful. There's a waterfall there, and not to mention the restaurant's namesake, the Stone Bridge, is right there. Stone Bridge Restaurant actually opened in the 1940s, but it was a seafood market. It wasn't a restaurant, but today it's grown into a staple in downtown Milford. They offer everything from burgers to amazing seafood dishes. They have outdoor seating on a deck, and they actually cover the deck even in the colder months, so you can sit out there, they have heat lamps. They also have an outdoor patio that's open when the weather is nice. And there's three bars, as well as some rooms you can rent out. Like I know a dear friend of mine had her baby shower there. Uh, you can have a small wedding there, you can have a corporate event there. So they can do all of this for you. They are really well known for their outdoor live entertainment. They have concerts there almost every weekend, starting probably in May and going all the way through uh, November. If the weather's nice, they're gonna have a band out there playing. 
Now a side note, Stonebridge is one of the few restaurants in downtown Milford that has its own parking lot. But be warned, they always have an attendant there. So if you're not going to be dining there, then they will not let you park there. So don't think you're going to sneak in and get away with it because they literally stop your car as you pull in, ask what you're doing there, and then they let you in. So you best be dining at Stonebridge or else you might get uh, your car towed. Across from Stonebridge is Eli's Tavern. So some of you may have heard of the Eli's family of restaurants. They have several of them. There's one in Hamden, Branford, and another in Orange. But Eli's Tavern is the one that's in downtown Milford. They liken themselves to be a gastropub serving upscale tavern food. So really they have seafood specials, sandwiches, burgers, uh, grilled flatbreads, salads, great desserts. They really have a huge menu. It's a great place to meet friends, have a few drinks and some good food. And the best part is all of the Eli's have this very distinctive large bar set right in the middle of the restaurant. You can't mistake it. They all have it. And it's just, it creates a nice lively atmosphere. So as you leave Eli's and you make a left heading toward River Street, you'll see Cafe Atlantique. This is a great sandwich, pastry, and coffee shop. In the last year or two, they have had new owners, and wow, they've really done a great job of revitalizing and renovating the inside. So not only do they offer espresso and crepes in the morning, but they do wine and crepes at night. And they don't just have crepes, they have other types of amazing pastries and muffins, scones, and coffees. They also recently started having live acoustic music. So what's better than that? Go down there, have a latte, eat some great pastry, and listen to some amazing music. And on top of it, they have this really cute courtyard right outside. It's tucked between two buildings in downtown. It's so cute. They have bistro tables, there's trees and plants. You really do feel like you're tucked away. You're not like on a main road. Every time I've been in there, the place is hopping. I've been in in the mornings, people are having business meetings, they've got their laptops open, they're having coffee and food. I've been there in the middle of the afternoon, people are doing sandwiches out on the patio. And then you go by at night and people are drinking, eating desserts. It's always lively and I highly recommend it. And right next to Cafe Atlantique is Bistro Basque and El Barrio. So they're really one restaurant, but they kind of have two different feels. So El Barrio is more of like a bar. You can sit at the bar, you can have um, some small plates, but Bistro Basque is definitely more uh, someplace you would wanna go if you want more low key. It's more, I'd say romantic, or, you know, it's definitely not a bar atmosphere in Bistro Basque. And all of the food is centered around the Basque regions of France and Spain, and it's always excellent. And honestly, it's one of my favorite places in Melford. They have a huge selection of tapas, which makes it fun. If you go with some friends, you can order a ton and sample everything. They have excellent drinks, a great atmosphere, and quite honestly, it's always a hit when I bring people there. As you travel up River Street a little bit further, you're gonna hit Strega Restaurant. Strega hasn't been open that long, maybe two years, but it's an authentic Italian restaurant pizzeria that is really starting to gain tons of fans. They have a full menu of entrees and a huge selection of pizzas with a pizza bar. So if you're looking for an authentic Italian dining experience, this is the place for you. And even better, they recently opened up Strega Market just a couple doors down. And it's again, an authentic Italian import store. It literally just opened a few weeks ago. So it's brand new to downtown Melford, but they offer amazing things. They have gorgonzola from Italy, olive oils, mozzarella. I mean, you're looking for it and they have it. And they have a grab and go section. So if you're looking for sandwiches and soups and a quick meal ready to go, they have that too. Next to Strega's Market is Michelizzi's Italian Ice. Michelizzi's has been a staple in Bridgeport for over 40 years and only recently opened this location in Milford last year. They have Italian ices, regular ice cream, shakes, 
Sundays, and they have something that they feature that's their signature item. It's called the Peace Cookie. And basically, customers can select their favorite ice cream flavor and make a sandwich between two freshly baked cookies to die for, really. And as you turn that final corner from Michelizzi's, there's a short stretch of New Haven Ave that connects it from River Street to Daniel Street. And right wedged in there is the Seven Seas Restaurant. This is a gem in Milford. Everybody knows the Seven Seas. Its decor is like that dark wood paneling circa 1970s. And they have like knotty pine that's been there forever. They also have a bar rich in history and character. There's a small dining room and it's lined with family photos. Seven Seas has been in business for over 50 years and they are known for their award-winning lobster rolls, seafood, and wings. I mean, you have to try the wings when you go. It is a neighborhood favorite and everybody knows the Seven Seas. So it's not all restaurants in this area. There are a couple of small businesses that adorn this section of downtown. First, I have to mention the Canvas Patch. This small business, which is a gift shop, has been around for 45 years, and their owner, Marty, is so friendly. I stopped by while I was doing this video, and she sat and chatted with me for like 40 minutes, and it really was so nice to get to know the actual owner of the business. Her gift shop has so many unique and beautiful gifts for everyone. They have, you know, things like purses and hats, but they have like nautical themed gifts and beach themed gifts, Milford inspired gifts, Christmas inspired gifts. You really can find something for everyone in there. And like I always say, it's always great to support your locally owned small business. One of the other highlights of this area is definitely the waterfall and the stone bridge that crosses over New Haven Ave. It's known as the Old Stone Bridge and it carries New Haven Ave over the Weepawag River. So the story behind it is that in 1888, Milford was celebrating the 250th anniversary of the founding of the first church. To celebrate this important date, the city of Milford paid for the building of the stone bridge. And what's so cool is that the bridge bears commemorative stones for each of the founding fathers of Milford. And on either side of this bridge, there are two towers that are like beacons on either side of the road. And it really makes the downtown area have a quaint feel. So as you walk along the bridge area, you're going to see stones that line the entire section with names and dates of folks that were important to the history of Milford. For example, right below one of these towers is a big commemorative stone for Robert Treat, who was the governor of the colony of Connecticut for 30 years, and he died in 1710. Yeah, this Milford's been around for a really long time. And as you keep walking, you're going to just see name after name about who this person was and what they meant to the city. It's really a stroll through history. And it's amazing to see how long the history is here, right in Milford. Again, once you walk through this bridge area, you can see the Weeperwog River, a beautiful waterfall, and it eventually spills right out into the Milford Harbor. So as I said before, I'm definitely gonna do a series on downtown Milford, because there's too many shops and restaurants to talk about. So stay tuned for the future videos that I'm gonna do on downtown Milford. If you've been watching my videos and you like them, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It's always great to get new subscribers. And I put out new videos every week. If you liked my downtown Milford video, check out the Milford Harbor video I did about a month ago. Plenty of stuff to do down there too. Hope to see you in Milford someday. I'll see you next week.